strikes are the traditional, primary tool by which a non-essential employee group can persuade an agency to achieve a desired bargaining result through withholding services. Because of their impact on the services to the public, strikes in the public sector are limited and governed by state statute to a greater extent than the private sector. A strike is a concerted action in failing to report for duty, the willful absence from one's position, the stoppage of work, slowdown, or the absence in whole or in part from the full, faithful, and proper performance of the duties of employment for the purposes of inducing, influencing, or coercing a change in the conditions or compensation or the rights, privileges, or obligations of employment. This definition is very broad and includes more actions than the traditional situation where an employee is outside of a facility picketing rather than working. As long as the action is mutually agreed upon or concerted for the purposes of inducing, influencing, or coercing a change in the conditions or compensation or rights, privileges, or obligations of employment, such as sick outs, calling in sick when the real purpose is to withhold services, and work slowdowns are all considered strikes. Only employees who are deemed non-essential under the law and who have provided the appropriate notice may strike. Public employees and employee groups not directly involved in the negotiations but who are sympathetic to the bargaining unit are not permitted to strike. If a union contract is in place, employees may strike only when the union contract has expired and the union and employer have participated in mediation for at least 45 days. If there is no union contract, most likely because it's a new bargaining unit or a different bargaining unit because exclusive representation has changed, employees may not strike until 45 days after the certification of the new or different representative and the parties have participated in mediation for at least 45 days. Employees must provide a 10-day written notice prior to striking. The notice must be served on the agency and the BMS commissioner. If more than 30 days has expired after service of notification of intent to strike, a new 10-day written notification must be served before any strike may occur. The general rule is that all strikes are prohibited except were specifically permitted. And the following are specifically prohibited strikes. Any strike by an essential employee or employee group, any strike that occurs prior to the end of a union contract, any strike that occurs prior to the parties being in mediation for 45 days, and any strike occurring without the required notification we just discussed. Strikes offer potential benefits and costs to agencies and the effective employee group. Let's take a look. Strikes should be viewed as a blunt instrument by which a bargaining unit tests their practical power in two primary areas. The first area is a test of whether the agency will be forced to give in to the union demands because the consequences of failing to have bargaining unit workers perform their duties. Where a city cannot function without services being performed, an agency will have no choice but to go back to the union and seek to resolve a contract dispute under the union's terms. The second test of power occurring in a public sector strike is the union will seek to enlist the support of citizens and other individuals who may in turn persuade the city's political leaders, particularly elected officials. However, from the agency's perspective, in the event a bargaining unit does go on strike and the agency is able to continue to function, the employer will gain a significant upper hand in subsequent negotiations. In addition, employees may seek to decertify a union that engaged the employees in the failed strike. In contrast, where a strike demonstrates the agency cannot function without the services of the employee group, the employer will need to act on the union's terms to resolve the strike. An agency facing the potential of a strike must develop a plan to deal with the impact of that strike. A strike plan details how the employer will operate during a strike. Strike planning generally includes establishing a central strike committee and establishing written strike plans. These strike plans should also be prepared in well in advance of the date when a union sends out that 10-day strike notice. The agency's strike committee is typically viewed as the central command of strike-related activities. 
The members of this committee should include the chief administrative, head of the agency, the labor negotiator, labor attorney, and key department heads. In some cities where an elected liaison is actively involved in their operational affairs, this individual should also sit in on the Central Strike Committee. The primary role of this committee is to coordinate the strike plan of various departments, provide strategic planning on how operations will continue or cease during a strike. This includes identifying how required staffing needs will be met and how those individuals will be compensated. This committee serves as a resource to others in the agency and provides a central command post for communication. All of that communication, no matter to the press, unions, and outside individuals, typically are directed through the Central Strike Committee. The committee will typically prepare a communication to employees in the bargaining unit that may go on strike and a separate communication to other agency employees. Any communication should be in writing to lessen the potential of dispute about what was actually said. Communication with those employees not involved with the strike will typically advise them of the potential of the strike and the agency's expectations of them during the strike, which likely includes ex expectations to report to work. The written communication may note that work slowdowns, sick outs, and other forms of concerted worker protest other than traditional picketing and stoppage of work are all considered strikes and are prohibited for employees who are not in the striking bargaining unit. Issues such as cancellation of vacations, security matters, and other practical information should be addressed in this communication.